Hello everyone and welcome back to Splash. Today we're going to be talking about 15 times The Simpsons predicted the future. Number 15, autocorrect fails. Speed up, Mark. During a Springfield Elementary School assembly, Kearney asked fellow bully Dolph to take a memo to beat up Martin on his Newton, Apple's early attempt at a personal digital assistant. However, the machine translates the message into Eat Up Martha instead, foreshadowing the common messaging errors people blame on iPhone's autocorrect technology. In fact, Apple's former director of engineering for iOS applications revealed in 2013 that the Simpsons gag served as a rallying cry while developing the software for the iPhone's keyboard. If you heard people talking and they used the words Eat Up Martha, it was basically basically a reference to the fact that we needed to nail the keyboard. We needed to make sure the text input works on this thing, otherwise you can imagine the number of errors. Number 14, Siegfried and Roy's Tiger Attack. Tiger came to fruition 10 years later when Roy Horn was mauled on stage by a white Bengal tiger, leaving him partially paralyzed and ending the long-running production. Number 13, The God Particle. The existence of the Higgs boson, or God Particle, a breakthrough that helps explain how everything in the universe has mass, wasn't confirmed by physicists until 2012. But according to Dr. Simon Singh, the author of The Simpsons and Their Mathematical Secrets, after Homer decided to become an inventor in the Wizard of Evergreen Terrace, he was pictured standing in front of a blackboard with an equation that predicted the mass of the yet-to-be-discovered particle. If you work it out, you get the mass of a Higgs boson that's only a bit larger than the nanomass of a Higgs boson actually is. It's kind of amazing as Homer makes his prediction 14 years before it was actually discovered. Why? Uh, yeah, no. no one really is sure why. <laughs> but it could very well be that there's an exchange. Number 12, FIFA's corruption scandal. Yeah, that's the thing that guys at the dry cleaners get so excited about every four years. I'm afraid there has been an epidemic of referees being bribed to throw games. From the pre Although the World Football Federation representative who asked Homer for help repairing the organization's image isn't explicitly named as a member of FIFA. Myself, I'm about to be arrested for corruption. You will have to take it from here, Peter. Yes, I will take good care of you. His arrest turned out to be uncannily similar to those of real-life FIFA officials who were arrested on corruption charges about a year later. Not to mention that the episode also correctly predicted Germany's defeat of Brazil in the 2014 World Cup. Officials were arrested in Zurich in May 2015 over the Russia Cutter vote. Among those convicted were Warner and Leos. Number 11, Donald Trump's presidency. As you know, we've inherited quite a budget crunch from President Trump. How bad is it, Secretary Van Houten? We're broke. The country is broke. When Bart flashes forward in adulthood, viewers learn that Lisa not only becomes president, but inherits quite budget crunch from her predecessor, Donald Trump. She asks her aides in one scene if the country is broke. At the time, the real Trump presidency was still 16 years away. However, in a 2016 interview with The Hollywood Reporter, writer Dan Greeney explained the joke was meant as a warning to the country. That just seemed like the logical last stop before hitting bottom, he said. It was pitched because it was consistent with the vision of America going insane. Fixing, the writer of the episode says the show always embraced that sort of over-the-top part of the American culture and Trump is really a... Number 10, Disney's Fox Takeover. Many celebrity, living or dead. Well, I'll always have my crank calls. After a trip to Springfield, director Ron Howard pitches a screenplay that Homer wrote to producer Brian Grazer of 20th Century Fox. At the beginning of the scene, a sign can be seen at the Fox studio that reveals the company is now a division of Walt Disney Company. Close the entrance to 20th Century Fox Movie Studios. Now check out the fine print, a division of Walt Disney Company. Cut to nearly 20 years later and this sale is officially underway, with the news breaking that Disney has reached a deal to acquire $66.1 billion worth of Fox on December 14th, 2017. Massive deal that reshapes the entertainment biz, so Disney is buying a big chunk of Fox. For $52 billion. Yeah. Number 9, Ebola Outbreak. One, one. F-Bards. 
And believe me, you'll be seeing plenty of them. Some people maintain that The Simpsons predicted the 2014 outbreak of Ebola 17 years before it happened. In a scene from the episode Lisa Sachs, Marge suggests a sick Bart read a book titled Curious George and the Ebola Virus. The virus wasn't particularly widespread in the 1990s, but years later it was the top of the news agenda. Bart, would you like to read a book? No. Would you like to color something? I did. <laughs> Ebola was first discovered in 1976, and though this latest outbreak has been the worst yet, it killed 254 people in the Democratic Republic of Congo in 1995 and 224 in Uganda in 2000. Treatment. He traveled inside this medically equipped military jet. In Liberia, this is what's passing for sanitation centers. Number 8. Daenerys Targaryen's Big Plot Twist in Game of Thrones. One of the penultimate episodes of Game of Thrones, Daenerys Targaryen shocked fans when she and her dragon laid waste to an already surrendered King's Landing, obliterating thousands of innocent people. You peasants are a dragon. In 2017, on a season 29 episode of The Simpsons titled The Surf Sins, which spoofed various aspects of Game of Thrones, including season eyed Raven and the Night King. Homer revives a dragon that proceeds to incinerate a village. Number 7. The U.S. beat Sweden in curling at the Olympic Games. Oh, it's just for a date night. In one of the biggest upsets of the 2018 Winter Olympics, the U.S. curling team won gold over the favorite Sweden. This historical win was predicted in a 2010 episode of The Simpsons called Boy Meets Curl. In the episode, Marge and Homer Simpson compete in curling at the Vancouver Olympics and beat Sweden. In real life, the U.S. men's Olympic curling team won a gold medal after defeating Sweden, even though they were behind, which is exactly how it played out on The Simpsons. The victory is the second curling medal ever for the United States, not including margin homers, of course. Here it comes. There it goes. The United States scores three. Number six, Nobel Prize winner. It's 4 a.m. You kids should have been in bed a half hour ago. We're watching the Nobel Prize announcements live from Stockholm. Ooh, the Nobis. <laughs> For economic Bank Holmstrom may not have won the Nobel Prize in economics until 2016, but one Simpsons character was betting on him six years prior. In a scene from the season 22 premiere in which Martin holds up a scorecard depicting his Nobel Prize betting pool with Lisa, Milhouse, and Database, the MIT professor is clearly marked in one of Milhouse's squares. Bank Prize in Economic Sciences in memory of Alfred Nobel for 2016 to Oliver Hart and Bengt Holmstrom. Number 5. Grease's Debt Default. Blustering bloat bag who claims to speak for Baba and Britney spray cheese. That's really smart. That's like something I would say. Precisely. When Homer appears as a guest commentator on cable news show Headbutt, a ticker runs across the bottom of the screen that reads, Europe puts Greece on eBay. Of course, this was three years before Greece became the first developed country to default to the International Monetary Fund, plunging the country deeper into economic crisis said that Greece will probably default and the majority predict that the same fate for Portugal and Ireland will follow. Well, the outlook... Number 4. NSA Spying Scandal No, Lisa, it's not like the government is listening to everybody's conversation. When the Simpson family is forced to go into hiding following their escape from the EPA biodome in closing Springfield, the NSA locates Marge and the kids by listening in on one of their conversations. She hung up on me. But we're fugitives. We should just lay low till we get to Seattle. Hey everybody, I found one! The government! 
Simpsons movie hit theaters that Edward Snowden first blew the whistle. Well, Edward Snowden actually. However, it wasn't until six years after The Simpsons movie hit theaters that Edward Snowden first blew the whistle on the government mass surveillance of Americans' phones and internet records. When the whistle was finally blown, it was discovered that the NSA had recorded about 157 million calls. Yeah, we spy on our own population. What makes you so special, Germany? Know what you're wondering? Ah, why do they spy so much? Number three, faulty voter machines. Ooh, one of those electronic voting dealies. One vote for McCain. Thank you. <laughs> no, I want to vote for Obama. Two votes for McCain. In a bit inspired by the 2008 presidential election, Homer tries to vote for Barack Obama, only to have a voting machine record his selection as John McCain several times. Coincidentally, when it came time for Obama to run for a second term in 2012, video footage emerged of a Pennsylvania machine switching a vote from Obama to one for his Republican opponent, Mitt Romney. The machine was reportedly taken out of commission. Number two, the censorship of Michelangelo's David. An episode from 1990 titled Itchy and Scratchy and Marge showed Springfieldians protesting against Michelangelo's statue of David being exhibited in the local museum, calling the artwork obscene for its nudity. It's needless brutality. I don't know if I'm having any impact at all. <laughs> The satire of censorship came true in July of 2016 when Russian campaigners voted on whether to clothe a copy of the Renaissance statue that had been set up in central St. Petersburg. Number one, letter from the Beatles. In response to your letter of December the 12th, 1966, my favorite color is blue and my real first name is Richard. In 1991, an episode of The Simpsons saw the Beatles' Ringo star diligently answering fan mail that had been written decades ago. Hmm, Mario Gingrich. From the desk of Ringo Starr! Dear Marge, thanks for the fat painting of yours truly. In September 2013, two Beatles fans from Essex received a reply from Paul McCartney to a letter and recording they sent to the band 50 years ago. The recording was sent to a London theater the band was due to play at, but was found years later in a car boot sale by a historian. In 2013, the BBC's The One Show reunited the pair with the letter, plus a reply from McCartney. There have been times when not only did though I have those hesitant three seconds, uh, I have actually puked at before I went on. <laughs> Just also, while you are here, go ahead and check out some of these other videos on your screen, and we'll see you there.